Hey everyone, welcome back to Book of Star. Today I'm gonna to talk about the fire anointing. Now that's something that I never heard of before, but God revealed it to me back in the fall of 2020. But before I start my story, how about you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also subscribe to my blog at www.bookofstar.com. So my journey really begins last year, January. God told me that you are going to live by bold faith this year. And I didn't know what that meant, but I did believe that whenever he told me to do something, I'll do it because it meant that he was gonna release something powerful. For the first half of the year last year, I spent it in God's presence. When I say I kept falling in love with him daily, I really mean it. Like I was spent all day with him. It was like we were writing love letters to each other. I was in his word. I was reading his books. I was studying his word. He was training me on how to hear his voice and help so I could be super sensitive to what he was saying to me. He was training me on how to speak to people, how to prophesy to people. Um, he was training me on spiritual warfare. I just couldn't get enough of God. Probably around August, I started feeling um, sad because I recognized that the whole year had gone by and I started feeling like I wasted my time. And I'm like, is that even possible? Cause you waste your time in God, you know? And so for me, I was measuring my success um, by what was going on in the physical. I still wasn't working. I still hadn't moved. I still hadn't gotten married and Lord knows that's what I'm waiting for, you know? Um, but in the spiritual, I was performing deliverances. I was teaching people. I was speaking passionately and that was great. And I will always say to God, please let my physical life match up with my spiritual life. Cause in my spiritual life, I probably was like 50 years old, but my physical life, it feels like I'm 21. <laughs> um, and so because I was feeling this way, the enemy started to attack my mind. He started telling me, you're a loser. Look at how you spent all that time with God and for what, where did it get you? You know, and then I'd go on Instagram and I'd look at other people, um, they use COVID to start a new business, to start a new community. They're thriving, this and that, this and that. And I'm just like, what do I have to show for all this time being home? And I felt terrible. I mean, it got to a point that like, I was crying. First of all, last year I was already crying every day, but this probably took, this probably went, uh, took me up a notch. I got to the point that I started scheduling my tears. Like that's how sad I was. Um, and no, I wasn't depressed or anything. I was just like, I just felt foolish. And I kept saying to God, I feel so foolish. Maybe I use spending time with you as an excuse not to get work done. Um, by October, my spiritual warfare intensified. The enemy was attacking me so much. He started attacking me through a really close friend of mine, um, completely dividing our ministry, ending our friendship. Like the enemy was relentless and um, I didn't know why. So I remember um, being on the floor and crying to God and the Lord said to me, the reason why the enemy is fighting you so hard is because I'm about to release the fire anointing on you. And I'm just like, is that real? I've never heard of the fire anointing. And then I thought, did I make that up? <laughs> but honestly, I'm not that clever because I've never heard of it before. And the Holy Spirit says to me, research the fire anointing. And so I research it and there's a lot of people talking about being baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, all right, God, I already have that. You know, once I accepted you into my life, you already baptized me with the Holy Spirit. But as I kept researching, I came across Charisma Magazine and I knew to trust the source because God had revealed um, one of the writers to me maybe in 2019 as he was training me to be a prophet. Her name is Jennifer LeClaire. She actually trains prophets. So I've read a lot of her books, which has really have helped me with hearing God and really um, honing in on the gift of prophecy. And so when I came across this site, I knew that it was a trusted site and this is where God was leading me. And it says, um, I'm going to read two paragraphs. There's so much more, but I also put the link um, down in my, uh, I'll, I'll put the link inside the comments so that you can read it. But it says, Anna actually encountered Mas the Messiah because of this. She was overwhelmed with a desire to tell everyone looking for redemption about his arrival. So Anna is actually a woman who spent a lot of time in the temple. 
and God had made her promise that she was going to see Jesus before she died. And she was very old in her age. After her husband passed away, she just spent all this time with God. She was very old in age. And when Jesus was born, he was brought to her so that she could see him. And once she saw him, uh, she was filled with such this passion and desire. She just knew that God had answered her prayers. And she went on preaching the word of God to everyone with such passion and zeal. So that's Anna that they're talking about. So uh, women who encounter Jesus are the greatest preachers and revivalists. Modern day women with the Anna anointing will spend time with God face to face, gazing on his splendor, experiencing his glorious presence and hearing his heartbeat through prayer. Now, when I started reading that, I started bawling my eyes out because remember, I was feeling like a loser. I felt like that I had made excuses to just spend time with God as opposed to like getting work done. That's what the enemy was making me think. But God was telling me, no, there was purpose why I was spending time with him because he was preparing me for this. Um, and I desired it. Like I love God so much. I love spending time with him. I would actually choose to do that over anything else. So he was just confirming to me like, nope, you were doing exactly what I was calling you to do. Those with the Anna anointing will share the reality of Jesus's love with fiery passion and zeal. They will be glory carriers, women who are baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. They will preach the gospel with signs and wonders following. And here's the thing, last year when God was um, training me, and I'll go more in details about that, but when he was training me, he... Um, I grew up in a church that didn't believe in his miracle working power. They didn't believe in the gift of prophecy. They didn't believe in speaking in tongues. And all of last year, God had um, released the gift of tongues to me. He trained me on how to speak it, so now I speak it very clearly. He released me into prophesying. He trained me how to prophesy, so I do that as well. And he started to show me that he will work through me, um, through miracle signs and wonders. So as I'm reading this, I'm like crying. I'm like, this is me. Especially because at the end of last year, I had um, recognized what my purpose is. My purpose is to spread God's love for everyone. And so when I'm reading this, I'm like, Lord, this is me to the T. And so I kept reading. These women will have a unique anointing because they have spent countless hours with the refiner's fire. Passion, purity, and power will exude from their being. And I will be like a wall of fire around her, says the Lord. And I will be as glory in her midst. That is Zechariah 2.5. Let me tell you, when I got to that part, I nearly fell out. Because um, the same friend that the enemy used to turn against me, before she stopped being my friend, she actually prophesied to me that God is going to be, that God has surrounded you with a wall of fire. And when I read this scripture, I was like, are you serious? I didn't even know. Like she was seeing into what God was about to release to me. So I'll stop reading there. It's so good. I would encourage everyone to read it. So I'm like, okay, God, I'm bawling my eyes out and crying to him. I'm like, thank you so much for choosing to um, release this onto me, right? So now this is about October. He hadn't released it yet. Um, he was still training me. And by the end of the year, December 31st, 2020, I was leading a group on Clubhouse talking about the power of salvation. And someone actually got saved. It was my very first time leading someone to salvation. And I pretty much was crying. I mean, I just couldn't even, <laughs> it was amazing. So after that, I went to my brother's church so we could ring in the new year. And his pastor now is walking around and he's anointing all of us and speaking a blessing over all of us. And he gets to me and he says, yes, Yes, there is nothing in front of her, behind her, beside her, nothing. I see the angels have surrounded her and inside of her is a burning desire. There's a passion in her, Lord. Release your fire. She is ready. Release your fire. And I'm like, wait, what? I don't know this pastor and he doesn't know me. I've gone to his church every now and then. We don't have personal conversations. So I knew in that moment that God has shown him something that was to come and it was the fire anointing. And so that was December 31st, 2020. But I recognized in that moment that God hadn't released the anointing yet. So now I go into 2021, I come into 2021 and I'm expected. 
right? God told me, he released the word to me that said, um, this is the year of restoration for you. Be expected. Sunday, uh, my sister is hanging out and I have a desire to go in my room and read. And I'm reading this book, um, how to perfect the art of spiritual listening, something like that, like listening for God. And in it, I come across a scripture in John 16. So this is uh, Jesus talking to his disciples and he's telling them why he has to leave because when he leaves, he's gonna send the Holy Spirit. And so starting at verse eight, and when he has come, which is the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me. And right there is really what got me. I said, Lord, not believing in you is sin. It never crossed my mind. I never labeled it as sin, but it hit me and I was just like, it makes sense, right? Because we don't go to hell for um, this. We don't go to hell for sins as in like uh, being drunk, having sex outside of marriage. We don't go to hell for anything like that. Murder, lies, because Jesus already died for us. He covered us in his blood. So that's not why we, that's not why we would go to hell. You only go to hell when you don't believe in God, when you don't accept him in your life as your personal Lord and savior. And I knew this, but in this scripture, when he talked about it being a sin not to believe in him, it hit me and I recognized that there are people in my life that do not believe in God. And that means that they are not secure. That means that they are in a state of sin and they haven't been awoken yet. And so I started praising God and I started thanking him because I started seeing images of him on the cross for us. And I recognized why it's a sin when we don't believe in him because God, 100% man, 100% God, went to the cross and died for us. He bled on that cross for us. And for us to hear that and then still turn away and say, no thanks, I don't want that, uh, breaks his heart. It breaks his heart. It's just like, okay, he doesn't force it on you, which I love. But when I really um, put that in perspective, I started crying and I started worshiping and crying out to him. And it was like a good worship se session for like 15 minutes. The Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit um, the song, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. And I'm just like singing that song. And then I get to the part that goes, um, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon the cross. And I'm just bawling my eyes out because I'm like, oh my goodness, God, I will never know how much it costs you to do that for me. So that was Sunday. Tuesday, I get home from a video shoot and I'm preparing a devotional that I have to lead in the morning. And... God starts giving me um, visions of him training me. And when I say training me, I mean like he, um, a couple of years ago, started speaking to me, of course it's in thought, and he says to me, look and see. And I would look out the window and I would see trees and I would tell him what I see. And he kept doing that. And then just last year alone, he started training me in other things. And so those visions were um, coming back to me. And he was reminding me that he had been with me all along, even when I felt betrayed, even when I felt alone, like he had been with me all along. And so I had a strong desire to worship. And I said to God, whatever is in me, let it come out, whether it is um, pain, whether it is, a, whether it is a worship, whether it is praise, let it come out because I'm ready for it to come out. And so he gives me a vision of me speaking in tongues. And so I get up and I start speaking in tongues and then I start singing in tongues and it's a praise song. And I'm shocked because the way that I was feeling, I thought that I'd be in straight worship, bawling my eyes out. But after I was done um, singing, it, singing in tongues, then again, he dropped the song in my heart. Um, Here I am to worship. And so I start singing that song and I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying. And I feel this extra presence here. And I'm thanking God and I feel, I feel like I'm surrounded by angels and I know the Holy Spirit is standing right next to me, just like encouraging me, like, this is it. This is the moment. And I get on my knees and I'm just thanking him for all that he has done. 
and I'm worshiping him and then silence befalls the entire room. I get, it gets super quiet and I just sit there kneeling down and the Holy Spirit says to me, my power I give to you. And in that moment, fire falls from, falls from heaven and it hits me and it starts burning me up and I'm rolling around and I'm screaming. And that never happened. <laughs> But I love telling the story that way. Uh, fire did not fall from heaven. <laughs> but what did happen is the room did get super quiet. I did feel the angels surround me and I did feel the Holy Spirit there. And the Holy Spirit did say to me, my power I now give to you. And what came over me was a peace. It was like an inner knowing and a confidence that came over to, came over me. I felt like a heaviness on my shoulders um, that let me know that God had released the fire anointing upon me. And now I had the power and authority to do the things that he was calling me to do. And so I remember after he was um, finished releasing his power on me, I did say to God, you know, I thought that you were going to burn me with fire. And God's response was so dope. He was like, fire can't burn fire. And I was just like, okay. Um, and he said, no, I am surrounding you uh, with a wall of fire. And so I had asked God, will I recognize the difference? And he said, you'll see. And so the very next day, as I was leading um, a morning devotional on Clubhouse, um, I was praying over people, I was speaking into their lives, and I noticed the difference. The fire anointing came with this confidence that God has given me to speak into people's lives and not to be afraid. Even when it comes to teaching, he's like, go ahead and teach with that fer with fervor, you know, with that passion, with that burning desire. Like having the fire anointing means that you can burn every single lie that the enemy has planted, break chains, you know, like I was already doing these things, but it's now an inner confidence that exudes all over and people can hear it here's the thing god had been prophesying to me for some time now telling me that you know when you speak i am developing in you um so that when you speak people will know that it is me speaking through you and when he released this anointing i totally saw it so for a girl who just lives in the projects um god has blessed me with this anointing and I feel super, uh, I feel super um, amazed by it. Like, we always wonder, can we go deeper with God? And I felt like I went even deeper with him because I never heard of this anointing before. I grew up in a church that didn't believe in miracles, signs, and wonders. We didn't really talk about anointings and mantles. And here I am spending time with God and he has released this onto me. So I am super excited about it. I'm looking forward to learning more about it. Um, I want you to share with me though, like it's not just about me talking to you. I wanna hear from you. Has God ever released an anointing onto you that you never heard of? Um, how did you deal with it? How do you move with it now? And how's it going? So if you found this video enjoyable, did you? if you liked it, be sure to leave a comment below. Um, like, share this video, and subscribe to my channel as well as subscribe to my blog.